Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane, the digital audio school down in Montpellier, France, an Ableton Certified Training Centre. So for this first tutorial of 2019, I'm going to show you how to optimize your controllers and effects for your live performance using a simple trick in an audio effect rack. When we start performing with Ableton Live, we may not have many controllers at our disposal. Maybe a simple controller, a cheap one like that, that has only a few rotaries, a few pads, maybe a slider. Not much at all. And um, sometimes difficult choices in terms of controls and mapping have to be made. So with this technique, you're going to be able to control many effects with just one rotary like this guy and the uh, rotary will adapt will attach itself to different effects during the live set as well as helping with the controls the technique here will also help with optimizing the effects so that each effect or each clip has a specific effect attached to it so let's see how it works first start like i'm going to show you here with this scene i'm going to start and if we look at this channel here called Mellow One. At the moment, this clip plays and this effect affects the clip and I can now send the effect into play using the slider on my controller. When I start the next clip, well, a different effect, a repeat, for example, will come in and I'm now going to control the same, this effect with the same slider next clip and I've got a flanger, for example, and once again, the same fader on my controller controls that effect. So you see, the effects adapt to the clips, but the same controller remains. So, yeah, very efficient way to um, use effects and controllers for your live set. I'm going to show you how this is done. I'm going to open my browser, reach for the audio effects tab, and load an audio effect rack into that channel. Now, racks can be unfolded using these buttons. I'm going to open the, the macro parts of the rack and the chain part of the rack. So it's in the chains I'm going to throw a few effects, for example, a flanger, an echo, and a redux, for example. Right, I'm going to rename the chains here. Like so. Now, for each of the effects, I'm going to need to choose which parameter I need to use in order to hear the effects, in order to uh, activate it onto the clip. So, for this echo, for instance, I'm going to control the dry wet, and I'm going to right-click onto that control and map it to Macro 1. Same goes with the feedback, for example. I'm go also going to map it to the same Macro, Macro 1. Now, let's open the map mode onto the rack to optimize the range of these controls and I can now close map. Same goes with the flanger. I'm only going to use the dry wet but I'm also going to assign it to, to macro one like so. Same goes with uh, redux. I'm going to map the down sample and optimize a little bit the range. I want to control this effect like so. Great. Now first thing done I'm now going to show you that I can basically control different parameters on different chains on different effects with the same macro. You see, when I raise the macro, I'm actually moving the down sample, but I'm also moving the dry wet of the flanger, and I'm also moving the feedback and the dry wet of the echo. So one macro does it all. Now, let's open the chains of the rack. So this MIDI range here will let us decide which chain receives the audio signal. In order to receive the signal, a chain must be hovered by this MIDI selector here, this little blue guy here. So if I place each of the chains on different numbers, like the first one is on zero, the second one on one, and the third, one, third one on two, I can now decide with this little guy which chain receives the signal. Let's just launch a clip, and you'll find now that the first chain receives the signal, the echo. You can see the meter here, and when I move this little guy here, I move over to the second chain, and I move over to the third chain, like so. So that way I'm going to optimize which effect affects the clip. So let's move over to the first clip and select, first of all, the selector. Now with a shift tab, 
shortcut, I can open the clip. I'm going to open here the envelopes of the clip and decide which channel, which chain I want to choose. So I'm going to choose the echo, which is uh, number zero on the range here. So I'm going to place a little dot here so that the envelope dictates this position for the MIDI control. Now for the second clip, I'm going to move the little blue guy to the second chain here, number one, and I'm going to, again, place a little node. Third clip, I'm going to select the clip, move the little guy here to the third position here, and place a little node here. Now, I also need to make sure that the effect resets itself every time I launch a clip. So this time I'm going to select the macro one here and move over to each and every clip to place the macro at its lowest position, which is number zero right there. So when I now launch a clip, let's see what happens. The chain selector has moved to the first chain and the macro has reset itself. If I move the macro and I launch this next clip, you'll find that the macro resets itself and the selector has moved to the second chain. So all that's left to do now is to assign this macro to a controller. And to do so, I'll enter map mode with command M, move the controller, and get out of mapping mode with escape or command M again, yeah? That's it, so now let's demonstrate. I launched the first clip. I can now move the fader. We can hear the echo. You can also see the parameters moving here. I can control the strength of that effect. Let's now start the second clip, like so. The macro goes back to zero, so no effect is heard. Now we can see that the second chain receives the signal. I'm now gonna move my fader all the way down to catch up the position here and raise it. And you see now that I can hear, I, you can hear the flanger now, yeah? Yes, great. Let's start the third clip. The macro resets itself. The selector kit moves to the third chain. And if I lower the fader to catch up the position and then raise it again, I can now hear the redux, you see? So this technique is quite lengthy. I mean, it takes a lot of time to program over a whole life set to program this, these uh, movements, these envelopes and these effects, but it's well worth it since you can tell now that one controller, my controller is on, only one controller is used for one channel and many different effects all across my live set. So quite worth it, uh, this little technique. I hope you enjoyed it. Speak soon on another tutorial for Fastlane. Bye.